Today's video is all about textures and shadows, so stick around to discover 4 ways to play with them inside Adobe After Effects. Alright, let's demystify these effects one by one. For this first effect, what I have here is a photo of some texture as a matte layer for our text, which as you can see is set to be visible through our texture layer. If I set the track mat of our text layer to none, you can see that the texture is gone. So a very simple technique is to tell After Effects to make our text layer visible through our texture layer. Then an important step is to make sure it's on Luma mat, not Alpha mat, because Alpha mat won't give you the texture and will flatten everything. Setting it to Luma mat means to display the text regarding the luminance of the texture layer, hence the highlights and shadows of the texture apply to the text. Now, depending on your texture, you can go with Luma mat or Luma inverted mat. My texture is more visible through Luma mat here, but you can always play with the color and luminance of the texture itself to get your desired look. Then down here, I have another copy of the texture layer fit to the comp size. The reason that the texture layer of our text was smaller is to make some variations between the text and the background. You can see that the blending mode is set to subtract and it works with the solid layer I have beneath it, which has a gradient ramp to colorize it and the subtle noise to avoid color bending, which is more like a habit and isn't really necessary for this effect. So based on the looks of your texture and the color of your solid background, you should play with different blending modes to get this kind of variation between your text and the background. And finally, we have these rusty edges that are the result of using the roughen edges effect on our text layer. You can see that the edges are too clean when turning it off. So if you want to make it a little less clean, just add the roughen edges, set the edge type to rusty and play with the values until you're happy. You happy? Okay, for the next one, I have a simple triangle here, and the trick to have this noise shadow is not by using a drop shadow effect. So if I add the drop shadow to the layer, you'll see that there is no noise option in here. But if I go to the layer, right click and add the drop shadow from the layer styles, you see that here I have a lot more options to play with, and among them, there is the noise effect that creates this noise shadow, and in my opinion, is much better than a normal shadow. Alright, next one is another type of shadow or reflection that's like a fall off from a light source. These two shape layers aren't doing anything, so let's just hide them. Then if you have a closer look, our title doesn't have any reflection or shadow on it when it's down here. But as soon as it gets closer to those color sources, it gets the reflected light. So how do we make it? Simply duplicate the shape layer, position it at the intersection line of the text and the light source, add a blur effect to it and set its track map to the text layer so that it's only visible if the text is there. I'll turn off the track mat and the blur effect. You can see that it's just a shape layer with a slightly reduced opacity. Then when I turn on the blur, it gets the form of a reflection and by setting its track mat back to the text layer, the effect is complete. Here we don't have the reflection and then when it's closer, it appears. Simple as that. Same thing for the other one here and yeah, this is how to do it. Now for the last one, what we have is an animated texture for the background of our text layer which is set to linear dodge. More on that later. Then there is a solid background with gradient and a displacement map which is set to a loop texture comp. Now the way to make the texture loop is to have a texture photo that is bigger than the comp size. If it's not, you can scale it up. Quality is not important here. And every 4 or 6 frames change the position to see a different part of the texture, hence creating variations in the texture. Now to make it loop perfectly, you need to copy the first keyframe for the last one and then to make the keyframes look like this, which means the value won't change between the keyframes and it jumps from one keyframe to another. All you need to do is to select all your keyframes, right click and choose toggle hold keyframe, which holds one keyframe value until it reaches the other one. Now to make it loop over and over, all we should do is to alt click on the position stopwatch and add the loop out expression and it will loop even after the keyframes. Then this adjustment layer is to make it black and white using tint effect and then create more contrast by using the curves effect. You can swap the colors if you want to reverse the look and this is what you need for the texture map comp. Then you can bring it to the main comp, turn it off and choose it as the displacement map in your background layer. 
set the displacement to luminance and play with the amount of displacement until you're happy. Are you happy? And then if you set the blend mode of the text layer to linear dodge, you'll get some of the texture visible through the text, which is another way to spice it up. And that's it, four ways to give texture to your designs inside Adobe After Effects. Hope you learned something new today and until next time, just try to be happy, okay?